Now that we have our initial theoretical curves, we're going to create our first slab surface. So I'll go to my slab's geometrical set, defining work object. The first surface I'm going to create is going to be a sweep. We pull up my surfaces, we'll go into sweep, and the sweep type I'm going to use is a circle. Two guides and a radius. What this allows me to do is specify these two curves, curve 1, curve 2, and I'm going to use this 3D curve as my initial um, spine string, control orientation. And now that I have that in there, I'm going to go in, increase my radius so it's big enough to bridge the gap. We'll go up to 400, for instance, and pre. Now, I'm going to use my next button to get to the solution that I'm looking for. Select OK. And this is just a little warning saying the uh, surface has been relimited on one of the uh, guide curves that I've used. Meaning, if I look to the very end, you'll see that the surface is a little shorter than the guide. So it's really not that big. Now I'm going to take a look at the surface and inspect it. And you can see that it's pretty far out over here, not a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original curve. Now this is my initial curve, there's my parallel curve. I'm going to double click on my initial curve. I'm going to set my compass so it's oriented correctly. Pull this up and out of the way. Actually move this off the screen. And now because of the way that I have this built, when I come in here and make a slight modification to the very end of that surface, you'll notice that the entire surface is now pushed in to the scan. I can do the same thing with this control point. I'm just going to flatten it out just slightly. And by doing this in this fashion, it's given me the ability to quickly and easily make edits to that primary surface, as well as the theoretical curves, and control everything along the way. Select OK. So now, we can see where my surface is intersecting my point cloud. So if I need to, I can make modifications to this initial sweep. I can come in here, my radius of 400. I can double click on that, say maybe I want this to be at 200. A little bit gentler rather than so, uh, I'm sorry, a little bit bigger rather than so um, small. And as we can see here, you know, maybe I'm running into a scenario where I want to take and move this end, but maintain this end. So as I look at my curves, there's my parallel curve. Remember I used the parallel curve to move the surface. So if I come into my parallel curve and I offset this out a little bit more, say 5 for instance. Okay. So now I'm tugging, pulling, aligning the actual surface and I have a really good indication of what's going on. Alright, let me change my radius back down. Let me make it 300, increase it again. What's nice about this technique is the surface is controlled by those theoreticals. So now I can take that surface, I can fit it to the point cloud, and all the while I can inspect what that surface looks like to get a nice clean surface primary running through those curves. One of the things that I like to do as well is I like to analyze, in this case geometric information, that surface to get an idea of how complex it is. And as we can see it's a 6 by 6 by 4. So here's a very large surface that encompasses the entire upper portion of the door and it's a relatively simple surface. You'll see no crazy pet breaking.
breakups, no crazy, uh, funky, oddly displaced patches trying to get this thing to match perfectly to the point cloud. The point cloud is a suggestion. It's merely getting close to the point cloud with the proper looks. Right, let's close this out. Let me hide the point cloud for a moment, or the mesh. And uh, this time I'm going to go into view. I'm going to go into lighting. And under the lighting tab, I have the ability to go in and move the direction of the light. I can change the, the reflectivity and the specularity and such. Get, get a good indication of what. this looks, I can go into a neon light, rotate that model, and you can see that the neons, this is just a quick inspection, look pretty good as it flows across the surface. Another thing I can use is a tool called Highlight Line Analysis. This is a freestyle tool. And I can pick my surface, and this gives me a nice mathematical guess, rendition of the surface you can uh, change the angle increment and you can change the compass and this should really look pretty good in uh, two views chances are it'll look a little off in one of the three views which is fine 